everybody, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with another piercing video. I'm sorry if you can hear rain in the background and the lighting is really bad. It's thunderstorming outside and literally I'm sitting right in front of the window trying to get some light. So I'm sorry if you can't see very well. But I just pierced my cartilage on my right ear and you're probably wondering why your right ear because it's kind of it makes my ears look a little unsymmetrical i guess because i have nothing on this side and then everything on this side and that's because this is my bad ear and every time i pierce this side usually it doesn't heal and i also have very bad scar tissue on my cartilage on this side from piercing it in the past so if you aren't new to my channel and you're here because of my piercing videos, I already have a video on my channel on how I pierced my cartilage at home, which is actually a helix piercing. Your whole ear is cartilage, but most people call it a cartilage piercing. So it's a helix piercing slash cartilage piercing. So I don't know if you guys can see the bump right here. That is all scar tissue from my previous helix piercing that I took out. And I just didn't want to pierce into scar tissue and I knew it would not heal if I pierced this side. I eventually want to go to professional and get my rook pierced on this side so I didn't want to have helix piercings and then my rook too so I'm waiting for this side and I pierced this side. I just want to say real fast that this is not a tutorial. This is just a video showing you how I did it. If you decide to do this at home and you mess up your ear it's your fault it's not mine. Just saying that right now you decided to do it at home and you decided to mess it up so it's not my fault just gonna say a disclaimer that this is not a tutorial i'm tired of people saying that they're gonna sue me even though they can't because this is not a tutorial so i really wanted my cartilage on this side because this is the side with the least amount of hair and you can like see it better but whatever and i'm gonna go ahead and put my hair up because having my hair down really hurts the piercing honestly okay i have my hair up now so you might be able to see it a little bit better and let me zoom in here is my ear that i just pierced sorry if it's not focusing too well it's still red and it's probably a little purple because it's swollen and i literally just pierced it like 10 minutes ago and there it is right there i'm not going to touch it too much but there it is. Here's this side. I don't know if it's focusing, but there's that side. So I just wanted to say when I had my cartilage pierce the first time, it was it never healed. I had it for three years and it would never heal. So I just took it out. I was tired of it. And I kept telling myself that I was not going to get another one, but I decided just to go ahead and try again and see if it'll heal on this side because I love the way it looks. I think it's beautiful, but it just would not heal at all. And it was also my most painful piercing. This time wasn't very painful at all. I don't know if you guys saw in the video, but I kind of just like pierced it. And the initial pain hurts pretty bad. And when you have to push through the last layer of the cartilage, then it hurts. But other than that, I didn't feel much. But I'm just gonna go over the process. Basically, I had everything set up on the counter. I had my sterilized gloves. They're a they were actually sterile. Um, I had to open them up and then that once they are released into the air, then they're not sterile anymore. I had my Stara Canula needles. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it, but I always say canula because it pisses people off. So I'm gonna say canula just to piss people off, but I know it's not pronounced that way. I used 16 gauge canula needles. I had my jewelry, which I was going to use a straight Labre Le bar or Labrette. Like I said, I'm not good with like pronouncing things, but I always wear a straight one in my tragus, so I was going to use that jewelry, but I had a really hard time threading it through the needle, so I just decided to go with this curved barbell, and I think the curved barbell is a little bit longer, so it'll give room for swelling, so I don't think there's anything wrong with using a curved barbell, and this one's a 16 gauge as well, so I used 16 gauge needle and a 16 gauge jewelry. Here's my bobby. Oh, bobby. Yeah, my sweet boy. I also had a pin. Um, you're supposed to use like an actual piercing pin that you can buy on like Amazon. It's like a sterile pin. I didn't use that. You should. They have them on Amazon and stuff. Um, I didn't use that to mark the piercing. And as you guys could see, there was another marking. I was gonna do two for this video, but maybe another time. I'm just gonna stick with one for right now just because I don't want to deal with two healing piercings. And then I had my jewelry sitting in some rubbing alcohol. And then I also had scissors to cut my needle. And I um, had my scissors drenched in rubbing alcohol like all night. 
I know that doesn't sterilize it at all. You can also buy like those types of scissors that are sterile online. I had some Q-tips. I had my homemade sea salt spray just because I ran out of my H2O Ocean spray and H2O Ocean piercing spray is very expensive. So if you want to make your own, you can make your own. You just mix some sea salt with some water. That's what I did. Um, it only lasts a couple days though. So I do have H2O Ocean spray, but it's very expensive. So I try not to use it too much. And then I had my alcohol pads, which are just like in a little like square that came with like all the tattoo kits and stuff that I had. So I just used those. And I think that is all that I had set up. I started with cleaning my ear with the rubbing alcohol. And then after I cleaned my ear, I just marked the placement real fast. I didn't touch my ear. I just took the pin and marked it. Then um, I didn't touch anything else. I put my sterile gloves on, grabbed the needle, and pierced myself. <laughs> one tip that I have, I've done pretty much all of my piercings myself. I think the only one I have not done myself is my first nose piercing, but I did my second one. I always have music on or watching a TV show or something to, to have loud sounds to distract you from the noise of piercing because especially cartilage piercing, you will hear three pops. The first layer, the middle, and the last layer. It's very crunchy, very loud. I don't like the sound, but that sound I know makes people kind of pass out sometimes. So I was watching The Vampire Diaries. I was really distracted with The Vampire Diaries while I was piercing myself. So here's a tip. Play music really loud or something to distract you from the piercing. Not to distract you from doing a good piercing, but just the sounds of it. That's what I did and that seemed to help a lot. But I poked myself. I think I did pretty good at keeping it, you know, straight. I think I pierced it pretty straight and it didn't bleed, so I guess I didn't hit a vein. I did use the um, the the light behind the ear trick to look at my like ear veins or whatever. You'll be able to see all the veins going throughout your ear. And I just kind of put my placement where I think like the smallest vein was because you guys remember the first time I pierced this ear, I went right through like the biggest vein in my ear and blood went everywhere. So no bleeding this time, like at all, and now my ears burning. But yeah, I pierced it, I threaded the jewelry through, which is this curved barbell, threaded that through. Um, I didn't record me putting on the little ball because it took a little bit. I put the ball on, sprayed it with my spray, um, used a little Q-tip to clean it real fast, and that was that. Um, the actual piercing, like the initial poke hurt afterwards while I was putting the jewelry in, didn't really hurt. And now it just feels like a small burning sensation, which most piercings feel like afterwards. And I'm not gonna touch it. That's pretty much it. I mean, it's nothing too fancy. I would not. I definitely want to say that I would definitely 100% recommend going to a professional for any piercing. If you're new to my channel, I like doing piercings myself because I don't trust professionals because every time I've gotten something done, not tattoo-wise, but like probably professional piercings, they always end up getting infected or they're, they're not pierced well. I trust myself more than I trust a stranger, so that's why I do my piercings myself, but I do a lot of research, and I try to use the best materials possible to get a good piercing. I've pierced myself like six or seven times, I would say, and none of my piercings have ever gotten infected. I've pierced my friend's cartilage, hers didn't get infected, and I also pierced my sister's ears, and hers never got infected as well. So I would like to say that I somewhat know what I'm doing. I'm not a professional by any means. I'm not a professional saying that out there, but I, I think I do a decent job. So I know there's people on YouTube who are going to do it at home no matter what, and I'd rather them watch a video of someone using at least proper tools than just using like a safety pin or shoving an earring through their ear. And I also wanted to add, if you are under, 18 and you're wanting to do this do not do it behind your parents back i don't recommend doing that i see many comments on my piercing videos of like 10 year olds saying that they did it behind their parents back and it got infected if you are 10 13 16 if you are a young age if you are under 18 and you're not an adult I don't recommend doing this because you're young. I don't know, I know you don't wanna hear this at all, but you are way too young to be doing this at home. I think you would at least should be 18 years old before you even think about doing this. And I'm, I'm kind of a hypocrite. I was like 16 when I did my first piercing. And as you guys can see, my first piercing when I was 16, it would never heal and I had to take it out because I did not do it the right way. Just wanted to give that advice. At least make sure you're old enough and mature enough to know what you're doing because you are basically wounding yourself. You're giving yourself like a fresh wound 
and you have to make sure it stays clean and you do it in a sterile manner so um i hope this video wasn't too boring and it was informational enough i know a lot of you guys are at my channel for my piercing videos which i do appreciate the only other piercing i want is my rook and i want to go to professional for that so don't expect any more piercing videos anytime soon if i'm being honest but if you guys have any questions um please just comment below on this video please don't spam my messages on like twitter and instagram because it's very overwhelming for me and it does get quite annoying. I'm gonna be completely honest when I get the same piercing questions spammed over and over in my messages so please just comment on this video and anybody who knows the answer please just comment and help each other on this video. <laughs> Make sure to follow me on my social medias so you guys can see behind the scene type stuff for my future videos and then I also have a PO box so you guys can send me letters, drawings, packages, anything you would like to send and I can open it in a PO box video. I've already gotten a couple letters and presents and I love them so much so thank you guys so much for sending me things in my P.O. Box. If I get enough things, then I'll do a whole P.O. Box haul. But I love you guys so much, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Okay, my cat's never cuddly, and I'm waiting for him to literally bite me, but for some reason, he's just, like, sitting in my lap. Oh, my sweet! He must be in a good mood. Are you in a good mood? Oh my, it's a boy. Oh, I don't know why he's being so sweet.